Hello, my name's Holly Mackay. I'm Managing Director of the Platt Forum. I'm here today to talk to Mike Foy, who's the MD of AXA Wealth International, about international bonds. What role do these play in customers' portfolios, and how does it all fit together on a platform? So, Mike, are you seeing greater levels of international bond business being written on platform? Absolutely, Holly, yeah. So we've seen bond volumes rise from a little over 20% mm -hmm. about three years ago to nigh on 50% now in terms of international bond business written through platforms. I think that slow start was inevitable in that platform adoption itself was gathering pace at that time. International bonds aren't a mainstream product, so in terms of uh, advisors having done ISAs and pensions and other things, they then typically turn their attention to an international bond if the client circumstance warrant it. But we have seen a dramatic growth over that short space of time and probably some future growth to come, I think to a level, possibly 50-60% of the market. As much as that. It's interesting because one of the things I hear from advisors that perhaps makes them think twice about writing bond business on platform is, is cost, that mm. double mm. kind mm. of um, mm. layer of costs. Mm. What do you say to that? I think cost for a third party product on platform is always going to be a challenge. Um, there, where you have a, uh, an in-house relationship, so we have an international bond that sits on the Elevate platform. Mm -hmm. So within the AXA group, obviously there's more room to assume a commercial position for that. Standard Life International would be in a similar situation. I think where you've got an international bond being written by a complete third party to the platform that the advisor is using, an extra level of cost is inevitable. Mm -hmm. The challenge for us is to make that cost palatable. So it, it hasn't seemingly influenced the levels of business we've seen, but cost is something you always need to be mindful of. And I think the trick is making sure that the customer experience, the advisor experience, once he's written that product on platform is such that the advisor feels and the customer feels that that additional cost is warranted. Mike, the other thing we hear, there's obviously the cost issue, but also sometimes the admin process, advisor's feedback, that it's not quite as smooth or as integrated as it could be. Yes, I think admin on products on platform is again something that's grown with the market. So much as the point I made about volumes growing, so the relationship between product providers and platforms has grown as well. So it's a, it's a different way of doing business. So I think platform advisors have driven much higher standards of service across the whole industry, uh, off platform as well. The sort of functionality that platform advisors expect now as providers we're having to provide across the whole market. So I think it's about working more closely with platforms. So it's a key strategic area for us. We've put a lot of effort into working more closely with platforms to understand how their admin works so that it feels more seamless when you do an international bond. We form some strategic partnerships, the likes of uh, Eccentric and Succession, mm -hmm. where we've understood exactly how their processes work. So the advisor, even though it's a third party product, even though it might be slightly more expensive, the whole process and advisor and customer experience feels much more integrated. Okay. And in 2014 then, what role do you think uh, international bonds play in, in advisors, indeed their customers' portfolios? I think they'll continue to be uh, a, a specific part of holistic planning. So advisors will commonly do the fundamental parts of a, of a client's portfolio. So ISAs, they'll get their pension sorted out, maybe some free assets invested. The international bond tends to then come further along. But with more disposable wealth, so with the pensions reforms coming in, people will start to liberate their pension pots. Once you've taken it out, you can't readily put it back into your pension. So some of them may have free cash. That brings inheritance tax issues potentially, but further investment issues. So they can offshore bond, as it does for non-platform providers, can forms part of a client's overall holistic plans. Okay, so a niche product, but a product you see growing and where you think that down the track, more than 50% of bond flows could be written on platform. Yeah, I, get, I think there's a limit. So a niche as in specialised, so I wouldn't say it, it, it doesn't uh, appeal to every single sector of the market, but it'll limit out, I think as you see platform business, not the whole of the advisor market won't go platform based, and that's, you know, that's just a fact, which is why we don't limit ourselves to either a platform channel or a non-platform channel. We embrace both and we're, we're serious about both. But I think you will see growth drive up in that and with the uses of international bonds, both for IHT planning particularly, mm -hmm. um, intergenerational planning will form uh, 
a bigger and bigger part of advisors okay. platforms so a specific product but a product you see having continued relevance and where you mentioned earlier that you think more than half of that business might end up being written on platform I think absolutely. I think that's in, in train with the growth in platform business generally. So international bonds will become simply another platform product, which is, is, is the good thing. It's absolutely how they should be. And the onus is on us as providers to ensure that it feels just like another platform product. Okay. Mike, we're sitting here talking about international bonds, which yet for me doesn't quite roll off the tongue naturally. We're used to talking about offshore bonds. What's the difference, in a nutshell, if you can, between Isle of Man offshore bonds and those in other EU jurisdictions? I think the simple answer is very little. Um, so if you look <laughs> That's across... It in a nutshell. Yes, well, quite. <laughs> if you look across Isle of Man, Dublin, Luxembourg, client protection is very much the same, so the advisor's not really making a call there. Mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely advisor preference or customer preference. Uh, there are particular facets of the business that are more attractive in Dublin. If you're a customer that's uh, been advised to take discretionary management, there's a VAT advantage at the moment, so that can make the cost slightly less. If you're an Isle of Man uh, based customer, then there are certain products there, particularly capital redemption bonds, which allow greater intergenerational planning, so they don't end on the death of the initial customer. Mm -hmm. So if you're advising family wealth, then it's a perfect product to allow uh, a cascade of advice down through generations. So both have a part to play. Okay. Well, Mike, thank you for joining me today to talk about international bonds. It's been a pleasure, Holly. Thank you.